And then um, the next person coming in now, according to our uh, record, is Dr. Kachuku. And uh, Linda, uh, how do you think this will go? Well, I hope, let's just wait and see, but I, I must say I did enjoy, you know, the, the screening of um, the um, former governor Fashola. I'm still calling him governor Fashola. I did enjoy it. I liked what he said about debt, his ending remarks about debt, debt sustainability, debt financing. I, I think know. all the senators enjoyed it. They kept wanting it to ask more. It was as if he took them to school. And every, it, was, it was really a very enriching time. Yes. Uh, and I, I would like to begin to make predictions here, if I may, and to say that the next nominee who is coming in now may also spend a long time. Yes, because of the, in the industry which he's petroleum. coming from, the petroleum yes. industry, there will be lots of questions. I expect questions on the PIB would be mentioned. Well, let's go straight to the chamber as Dr. Kachuku I want you to takes give us a brief history. information of yourself. There's anything that's been left out in your CV that you want to Linda. know about. If there's anything you want to talk at length about yourself. And after that, we'll ask you a few questions. Your Excellency the Senate President, Your Excellency the Deputy Senate President, Your Excellencies, Senior Officers of the Senate, Your Excellencies, particularly the three Senators who represent the Delta State, Senators uh, Amori, Senator um, um, Mwaboshi, and Senator James Manager, Your Excellencies, distinguished other Senators. Let, let me start by saying that I think the CV that you have in front of you probably details the entirety of uh, what my background is. I will only add that I have been one of the very few privileged Nigerians who have very few privileged Nigerians who, who have been opportuned both by the grace of my late father, Justice Kachiko, who is now deceased, and the financial support and willpower of the federal government through various scholarships that were given me and indeed the financial support and willpower of Harvard University that also provided me a scholarship for my doctorate degree. I have been therefore privileged to traverse uh, various educational backgrounds leading up to the doctorate degree uh, in law. But more fundamental, I have had 30 years of uh, unblemished uh, career in the oil industry, struggling from the upstream to the downstream to the private sector, I therefore believe that other than that, and other than the genealogical advantages that God has conferred on me uh, by virtue of the sort of procreative suggestions and training that my father gave me, uh, which have led me to certain basic principles, including the principle of humility, uh, the principles of service to the nation whenever called. Uh, the principles of understanding that you no know, one man, especially myself, has a unique uniqueness to, to know how. The principles of being able to walk on a camaraderie fashion with anybody and any group of people who are, whom God has stopped me with an opportunity to walk with. And the pri privilege of understanding that I probably am exceptionally lucky uh, to be before these hollow chambers. I haven't been here before, but first let me praise the architecture that I see. And let me praise the redness of, of the rocks that I see. And I think in this room I probably a collective level of wisdom that, that this country is blessed with. Thank you, Mr. President. My colleagues, my name is Dino Melai representing Kogi West Senatorial Districts. Mr. Nomini, if from your, uh, your citation, if you are appointed as minister in the Petroleum Ministry, how will it be possible for you to supervise and ensure 
the wide-ranging reforms you have listed in your reply in NNPC without sabotage from the new layer of management in NNPC. In other words, are you guaranteeing this Senate that you will be a hands-on minister to ensure full implementation of the, of the reforms needed? And finally, what will you do differently? And what will you do different from previous minister of um, petroleum if appointed into that ministry vis-a-vis uh, -vis the change mantra? Thank you. Senator George Akumi. Uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished uh, colleagues, Mr. George Akume, Venom Northwest. Well, Mr. Nominee, we're very cerebral and celebrated to, as we have seen in your CV. I have very few questions to ask. They're very short. But I believe they are pertinent. Number one, you are coming from a very, very sensitive industry. You are managing the NMPC where you have not been elevated to where, if confirmed, you will be a member of the Federal Executive Council. Doctor, there is one issue. Order, I'm please. Order, please. You know, very, very. important to us in this chamber. The issue of JVCs, we have raised this on this floor repeatedly, and no useful answers have been proffered. JVCs, we want to ask, are they applicable within the OPEC countries only, or applicable to other countries that produce oil but they are not members of OPEC. I ask you this because we understand that these funds are supposed to be used in the training of Nigerians who want to enhance the capacity of Nigerians in that industry. Everything that has a beginning must have an end. Do we have to continue to train and train and train and train Nigerians, given the fact that many of you are serving multinationals? Many Nigerians are now fully engaged in the oil industry. And the funds allocated are huge. When do we face out this completely? Remember General Baja, General Baja faced out this. And yet the industry was functioning. Number two, emergency power projects. These projects were conceived in 2005 by the federal government and all the tiers of government bought into this. We contributed huge sums of money. This project was supposed to produce, at the end of the day, 6,000 megawatts of power. This project was supposed to utilize gas, which we have in abundance. Terminal date of delivery was what? December 2007. Production of 6,000 megawatts to the national grid. We are in 2015. I left office in 2007. By fluction of time when I was governor, I left in 2007. We still don't have that. We've been told, rightly or wrongly, train one is not ready, train two is engaged, train three is supposed to be sold to this group, train four is this, train five is under construction. We don't know which is which, but funds have been put into this. We want to know precisely what the problem is. And finally, by the powers conferred on this uh, Senate, in fact, the National Assembly, we can summon any minister to appear before us. In the course of our investigation, in the course of our oversight functions, give us your word here. When invited, 
would you attend? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Andyuba. They will not attend. Mr. President, most distinguished colleagues, my name is Senator Andyuba, representing only the good people of Anambra State. Well, you know where they are. Uh, Mr. Nominee, nominee congratulations. Thank you. And I would like to congratulate your patriotism. Because going through your CV, for you to want to serve as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria shows that you want to help your fatherland. My question is, you were just appointed uh, over 60 weeks ago as GMD of NMPC. In what state did you find NMPC? And why has the corporation continued to be such a failed company? And number two, what are you doing to, in, to in, enshrine transparency and refocus the corporation? And number three, what changes have you made in your short period that you come in, uh, that you came in as NM, uh, GMD NMPC? Thank you. Senator Dantrangoji. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am Mohammed Ndumogoje, representing the Central and the State. Mr. Nomini, looking through your background uh, as somebody who has <coughs> served very well in the private sector and oil industry, and your short stay as a GMD of NMPC, I have just two very simple questions. Number one, using your experience and your intellect, would you tell this chamber and Nigerians whether you have a solution, permanent solution, to this perennial, perennial but occasional and almost regular scarcity of PMS and kerosene? In the case of kerosene, would you tell us how you would ensure that the people for which this kerosene is being given, the local, the downtrodden get this product at affordable price. That's the first question. The second question is there is this issue of PIB, petroleum industry bill, which has been lingering from the 6th Senate to the 7th Senate. And I happen to be a member of one of the committees responsible for that PIB. And there is this story making the round that there are so many versions of PIBs between the National Assembly and the Executive. The question is, would you now produce your own version, your own revised draft PIB for submission to the National Assembly, or are you going to rely on what's already been submitted by your predecessor? Thank you. Dr. Kajuku, take those set of questions. Okay.